This is a physics question that almost everyone gets wrong when asked, including myself. Here's the problem. There's a completely sealed airtight tank in this L shape here. It's completely filled with water except for this little pocket of air right here. The question is this, when I tilt this shape and let the air pocket float to the top, what happens to the overall pressure of the vessel? Let's say we're looking at the pressure at this point at the bottom of the tank. Would the pressure decrease since there's less water on top of it? Or will the pressure stay the same since the tank's completely sealed and the pressure couldn't change? Or would the pressure actually increase for some reason? So choose your answer now, decrease, stay the same, or increase. Well now let's actually try it and measure the pressure. All right, so I have a long tube that's sealed on both ends with a pressure gauge right here. And you can see at the bottom is my bubble. Right now we're at 0 0.89 bar. So now let's see what happens to the pressure as we let this bubble rise to the top. And I have another camera on it here and I'll put this up to the side so you can see the pressure continually as I film the bubble go up. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, there goes the bubble. It's going to the top. Okay, it's fully at the top. And we are now at 1.01 .01 bar. <laughs> so the pressure increased. The bubble is at the top. There's now less water on top of this pressure gauge, but there's more pressure. We've been measuring the pressure at the bottom the whole time, but the same should be true for the top as well. Let's see if the whole system increases in pressure by measuring the top pressure as well. Okay, now the gauge is at the top. We're at 0.77 bar there. And our bubble's at the bottom. Now let's make it go to the top. There goes our bubble. And look at that, the pressure goes up again. 0.77 to 0.85 bar. So no matter where our pressure gauge is in the system, the pressure always increases in the entire system. So literally all I did was change the location of the bubble and made it float to the top and it increased the pressure in the whole system. Why? This blew my mind when I first tried it. So I'll tell you that the answer I originally chose was that the pressure would stay the same. I reasoned that it's a sealed system so the pressure can't suddenly change in a sealed system just depending on where an air bubble is in it. Even if it didn't increase, my next answer would have been that maybe it would decrease since there's now less water on top of the pressure gauge and hydrostatic pressure increases with water height. But I would have never thought that it should increase. How's this happening? How is a sealed system increasing in pressure when a bubble's at the bottom versus the top? Well, since this goes against all intuition, I'm gonna try to compare it to a mechanical system. But first, life can get a lot harder than just getting physics questions wrong. That's why I wanna thank the sponsor for this video, BetterHelp. These last few years have been difficult for everyone. And one of the most important things you can do in times like this is to focus on your mental health. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. With BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues. To get started, you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via messaging, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist anytime and schedule a live session when it's convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge as well. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who's custom-picked for you, more scheduling flexibility at a more affordable price. So get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash action lab, or you can click the link in the description. And thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. Now what I've made here is a mechanical analog of that system. I have a spring, and this is going to represent the air because the air is springy. 
And then I have a weight because it's way more dense than the air and also it's not springy like the air. It's completely solid and incompressible. So when we don't have a defined volume, our water can compress the air. But now we're gonna fix the volume. So this is our fixed volume now. So now my spring's on the bottom and I put my water in like this, which is my weight, and it's gonna push it down a little bit. And that entire system fits exactly inside of this bottle. It's barely touching the top there. So we wanna know what the difference in force is when it's upside down like this with the spring on the top and the weight on the bottom versus when it's like this with the spring on the bottom and the weight on the top. So what I have here is a little force gauge and if it gets pushed on, you can see the weight change or the force on it. Okay, look at this odd little contraption. This looks like a bomb or something. <laughs> so in our case, it's gonna be that more force is negative. That's the way I've arranged the force sensor there. And you can see that when I push on it, it doesn't change anything because it's the actual force on the inside of the lid there. So this is the force on both of the lids because it's pushing on the top and the bottom. So it says zero right now, but then we turn it over and it says 0.4 kilograms. So by flipping it over, suddenly there's more force on both of the lids here. There's more force on this side and this side. So first when it's upside down like this with the bubble or the spring on the bottom, we get around 350 grams. Now we're gonna turn it upside down. So now you can see when I turned it upside down, the volume wanted to increase, but we can't let that happen because we said it's a defined volume, it's a fixed volume. So I have to push down on it now to make it the fixed volume. So because we had a fixed volume, the force on the lid increased when it's upside down. When the spring is on bottom, then the spring is the only thing pushing on the container. But when we flip it over, then the force on both of the lids increases by exactly the elastic force of the spring, which is equal to the weight of the load, which is mass times gravity. Now let's look at our water system again. When the bubble is at the bottom, it's under high pressure since there's a bunch of water on top of it. The volume is now fixed and water is incompressible. So that means that the volume of the bubble has to stay fixed as it rises. We can assume this is an isothermal process and apply Boyle's law, which says that if the volume is fixed, then the pressure is also fixed. So the bubble carries the high pressure it had at the bottom of the container to the top of the container. So the pressure at the top used to be zero gauge pressure, but now this high pressure bubble is there pushing down on the water below it. So the pressure of the whole tube increased by the pressure of that bubble, which was density times gravity times the height of the water column. Even when we explain exactly how it works, it still seems like it shouldn't work like this. How does a sealed system increase in pressure when nothing is changing except where a bubble is? Where did that extra energy come from? Where was it stored? Well, if we look at the potential energy of the water column, Notice that when the bubble is at the bottom, the column of water is higher off the ground. So it has more gravitational potential energy. When the bubble is at the top, the whole column of water shifts down a bit. So it now has lower gravitational potential energy. So that potential energy got turned into higher pressure. So we're converting potential energy to pressure when we're changing where the bubble is. This is the same case with the mass on a spring. When the mass is at the top, it has higher potential energy than when it's at the bottom. It's actually very important to know about this effect when you're dealing with long tubes that could have bubbles in them. For example, picture a long oil pipeline that has a bubble in it that suddenly floats to the top. This can cause very large pressure spikes in the whole system because of how tall the pipes can be when drilling for oil. This effect can even cause larger pressure spikes than expected in things like volcanoes that have a large molten reservoir on top of a bubble of gas that suddenly moves to the top, causing the pressure of the whole volcano to increase suddenly. I love questions like this because they're so counterintuitive that they make you have to learn more about the fundamentals in order to understand it better. Also, I'm one of the featured creators at Open Sauce this year in San Francisco. 
So if you're available, you can come meet me there and you can also apply to set up your own booth where if you've made anything that's really cool that you wanna show off, you can do it for free there. So come check out Open Sauce in San Francisco. It's June 14th to 16th. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I hope you consider subscribing so that you can see all my videos and not just the ones that go slightly more viral. And thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.